What's up everybody, I'm Derek, this is Rocking eForge, and this week I'm going to show you how I forged a gate hook. Now this project is designed to test your forge welding skills and your ability to forge to fairly precise dimensions, and is the final project for the California Blacksmithing Association and the Artist Blacksmithing Association of North America's Level 1 Certification. Now I do a decent amount of talking in this video, so I'm not going to bore you with the details here in the studio. So let's get out to the shop and let's get rocking. So I'm going to be starting with a piece of 3 8 inch round stock and forging all of these shapes to the precise dimensions as shown here on the sheet. So I need a staple with two square tapers, two one and three quarter inch square tapers down to one sixteenth of an inch. This will be my first part that I'm going to forge. The second part that I'm going to forge is going to be the tenoned latch connector. I'm going to need to neck down and create a tenon out of this three eighths inch round stock to a one quarter inch round tenon. Now that tenon is going to go through the quarter inch round holes in the mounting plate and then be riveted over for connecting it to the mounting plate so that you can use four screws to screw it into a wall or a gate or, or something of that nature. I'm going to worry about the mounting plate probably at the very end because I want to keep forging and working with the 3 8 inch round stock. So the third part that I'm going to forge is the gate hook itself. This will require a forge weld to get this kind of harpoon hook shape out of it. And I'll go through that when I get there. Okay, so I'm gonna try to keep as much heat in there as possible, as low as possible, so not drowning out me talking. All right, so we're gonna bring this across. I've got 3 8 inch round stock, and I'm just gonna start this taper. And we're gonna get that back in the fire. All right, so I look back at the drawing, healthy reminder, this tip is not meant to be perfectly sharp. It's going to be a 16th of an inch, which is about where I've got it. So I'm gonna extend this taper to one and three quarters, eight quarters inch long. But I don't wanna get longer than that, so I've gotta be a little careful. So I'm forging real light. The reason I've decided to go with this part in particular first is because the tapers are simple. It'll build my confidence for the remaining parts to come and uh, it gives me a nice warm up. Now I'm holding this taper at an angle uh, off the anvil. I don't know if you can tell on camera. I'm holding the main body off the anvil to just keep that kind of taper directly in line or as best I can with the stock as possible, as opposed to having it flat and having that taper down to the, the anvil and then having to correct that later. All right, so I'm gonna do a check here. So it's pretty darn accurate to a 16th of an inch. I've got that sitting right at an inch and a half. So I need to extend it another quarter inch. And I'm just gonna make sure everything is nice and smooth before cutting it off and moving on to the next taper rather. So we're uh, gonna extend this by forging in the middle of the taper first. I wanna thin the taper down and get as much length out of it as I can by making the taper skinnier because it doesn't need to be a big honkin' taper. Then I'm gonna check it before I go any further. Still sitting pretty solid at one and a half inches, so I'm just gonna extend that a couple hammer blows here. Work a little cold so that I don't crazily deform my bar here. All right, how we do? This, about here is one and three quarters. So that's about where I want it. I'm gonna measure out six and a half inches, knowing that this is going to lengthen with the uh, forging of the taper on the other side. But again, I would much prefer to have more material and shorten it as I need to than have too much material and not be able to make the requirements have to restart. So I'm just gonna use the edge of my anvil there to mark where I'm gonna cut it. You can cut this with a hacksaw, you can cut this with a bandsaw. You can cut it on, you can cut it using a hot cut on the anvil. The project itself doesn't give any requirements or guidance, so I'm just gonna go 
put it in the uh, vertical bandsaw and I'll be back. All right, so we've got it cut about six and a half inches in total length here. And the new challenge is assuring that you get the, the flats of this taper in line with the flats of the other taper. Now I know I'm probably gonna get at least half an inch of extra length here. And before I get too deep into the taper, I wanna check it. It looks like we're, we've got a decent alignment. I know I'm probably gonna get an extra half, half an inch or so of extra taper, but the benefit is I can file off the end of it pretty easy and then just extend the taper from the tip uh, to the precise length that I need once I've gotten most of it forged in already. very straight, but we're down to 1 16th there on the tip, and that should be a majority of the length gained. Let's see where we're at here. So yep, I got a little over half an inch uh, in extra length here so far, so we're gonna blend this into the overall piece and bend it and see just how much material we would need to take off once the bend's complete, and then we can unbend it and reforge the taper as needed. Alrighty. Blend this back into the body here. And I'll bet you that's right at one and a half inches. Spot on, one and a half inches. So I need to take that back to one and three quarters. Also, every hammer blow is gonna lengthen this a little bit. So I don't wanna go too far back. That is right about one and three quarters. All right, so what is our overall length here? And I managed. There is a slight difference between the two, but that's not gonna make too big of a deal. Overall length here, oh my goodness. Now the overall length here is just over seven and a half inches, which means I'm definitely gonna need to trim this down and reforge one of these tapers, because seven and a half is a whole inch longer than intended. So I, I'm amazed that, uh, I'm amazed I got a whole inch out of forging that taper. I was expecting maybe three quarters half to three quarters of an inch. Forging down to a sixteenth of an inch though, I guess uh, I should have known better. But all right, so we're gonna cut one of these tapers off at the inch mark. That'll put us back at six and a half inches. And I'm willing to have a little bit extra just to uh, make sure that we get the bend right. So six and a half inches plus finishing out that taper again should do us pretty all right. Mark that at the inch, inch point, cut that off and we'll see you in a second. somehow got back to seven inches. Part of the fun part is I need to bend it to where the square taper is perpendicular or is offset by 45 degrees from the bend itself, at least according to the paper. So the sharp corners are going to be along the bend as opposed to having the flats uh, square with the bend itself. All right, so I've got an actual turning fork this time. And I'm just gonna bend along the center here. I think 
that might be a little short on one side. I might solve that with some uh, filing instead of reforging the whole thing. And one of these got kind of misaligned. Ah, it's still a little wide there. So that needs to, got a lot of fiddling to do with it. Let's see lengthwise what we got here. Just so slightly longer than three inches, and that's the shorter end. So we, we did have a little bit more than six and a half. We'll have to do some fiddling with it to get it all situated. All right, that's three quarters. One of those arms is a little bit crooked. I'm gonna see, I gotta be able to heat just that arm so I can try to uh, quench it in water so I can try to fix that one by itself. Now this is mild steel, so don't try to quench carbon steel at home with, to get the same effect. But in order to bend just the arm here, I wanted to cool everything else off. Oh, perfect. Now I've got to re-straighten the taper here. quench this and then uh, compare it to the sheet itself and see how far off we are. So we're a little long, which we kind of knew already. And these are a little misaligned, but all in all, I'm feeling pretty good. Now, in the interest of making this not a 45 minute video, I'm going to do each individual piece as its own part to this video series. There should be a three part video series by the end of this. I'm gonna start with part one as the staple, part two as this tenoned latch piece, along with the plate, and then part three, and the final part will be the actual gate hook itself. Now, whether it was my project videos, tool making, or weird weapons of history that brought you to my channel, I am planning to continue to produce all of them and continue making content as best I can. If you are progressing toward that level one certification, I would love to hear about it, and if this video helped you in any way, please let me know in the comments below. Now, also, my channel hit 1,000 subscribers last week, and I know that while that's not a crazy accomplishment on this site, I'm still very thankful that there are so many of you out there that are interested in the videos that I produce and the content that I create. Every time you like, comment, and subscribe, it makes a huge impact on any channel, but especially the small ones like mine. So I wanted to express my gratitude in some small way. Thanks so much for watching, and keep on rocking.